The Friday Night Football Frenzy is presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Caraglia and Bay State Savings Bank. Coming up next on the Friday Night Football Frenzy, top teams battle in the twilight as Wachusett visits St. John's. A big game for the playoff picture as Doherty visits Shepherd Hill. The Westboro Rangers go on the road to Crocker Field to battle Fitchburg. And Colonial League powers square off as Valley Tech visits Assabet Valley. It's the end of the regular season. Time for some highlights. The Frenzy begins right now. How you do the rest of this year, how you do tonight, is how you're going to respond to everything adverse in the fight. You're backed into the corner, you come out fighting, you won't be a quitter the rest of your life. You come out and just quit tonight and let them beat us, you're done. The rest of your life will just be a quitter. Welcome to the Friends of Kevin Shea, Andy Lacombe, vintage Mike Pucko there, firing up Holy Name, yeah. just like he does with all of his teams, like he's doing with Holy Cross right now. Big night, final night of the regular season, so a lot of things shaking out right now in terms of playoff seeding and even guys and teams getting into the playoffs or getting bounced. Or getting bounced, yeah. And, you know, you had teams in Division Three where we're going to start. First four seeds are, are locked in. It's where will they end up, and will there be rematches Ooh. next week? It really all depends the first two games we're going to see tonight. Who wins? Who wins? Do we play again next week? Well, we started off with Wachusett and St. John's. A great rivalry, and obviously this one has a little extra to St. John's. Wachusett coming in undefeated. The St. John's crowd is pumped. Third quarter, 14-7 St. John's. Richarno Hilton barreling forward. Down to the six-yard line. It's first and goal for the Pioneers. Third and goal now. Iman Dennis on the draw. Tries to hurdle the tackler. It's a great tackle by Jack Pender at the one yard line. So it's fourth and goal. St. John's going for it, QB sneak. But Damian Benson and Sal Lando bowing up with the defensive line. They hold a huge goal line stand for Wachusett. Third and long, Seamus Higgins rolling. Hits Doug Kane, a host of tacklers taking Kane down. And it's a big first down for the Mountaineers. Same drive. Fourth quarter, fourth down. Wachusett going up top. St. John's defense holds a big stand for the Pioneers. St. John's facing third and 16 now. Colin Schofield hits Antonio Stakely. Great defense by Caleb Marrero with the chop. Balls loose and Hilton recovers. Huge, huge job by Hilton. It's a first down for the Pioneers. Wachusett defense stiffens. Stephon Johnson with a good hit. And the Mountaineers hold on defense. So Wachusett has one last shot late in the game. Higgins under pressure, scrambling. Justice Hathaway strips the ball. Dion Osei Sarpong recovers for the Mountaineers. They're still alive. St. John's bringing their hitting hats. On the sweep, Luke Farrako going down the line and a big stick from Farrako. Now it's fourth and nine. Last chance for Wachusett and they're going deep. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Dennis gets up, breaks it up. St. John's wins 14 to seven, a great game. The solution is speed and violence. Every solution we have can be solved with speed or violence. O-line, speed, fly off the ball, and then finish blocks with violence. Running backs, downhill hard, hit the hole downhill hard. Get vertical with speed, finish blocks with violence. Defense, run to the ball with speed. That's this game right now, is running to the ball with speed. Finishing with violence. Every play starts at zero. Joe Piscalis, his golfing buddy, Ryan Dugan, firing up his Rams from Shepherd Hill. Big one with Doherty tonight. First corner, it's Noah Callery hitting Brandel Oren. And look at Brandel get free, shedding some tacklers. 49 yards to the house, 7-0 Highlanders. Shepherd Hill would respond. Little chicanery, Gabe Dos Santos, halfback option pass. And he hits Nathaniel Cooper for six. After a Brock Doobie conversion, it was 8-7. Shepard Hill. Here's Chris Lindstrom. He's on a bye from the Atlanta Falcons. Says he's getting better. Feeling pretty good. Lindstrom, always good to see. What a classy young guy. Calorie airing it out. And Doherty looking good early. It's Anthony Franco for the touchdown. 13 to 8. Highlanders. Just so many weapons on offense. Dan Sheeran on a screen. Sheeran carving out some yards and a first down for Doherty. They're driving. We take it into the fourth quarter. Calorie to Franco. Find Jaden Baxter's block, and Franco gets a face mask and still gets into the end zone. Made it 20 to 8. 
Shepard Hill would answer. Coming back with the double win, Gabe Dos Santos. Speed sweep to the outside, and he is gone. That made it 20 to 15. This was a shootout, and Shepard Hill comes from behind to win it. 50 to 40, they've shaken things up in D3. All right, big one. In Grafton today, yeah, it's fantastic. Well, you, you, you can react to it. 13, sure. third quarter, it's 14 nothing Warriors. Here comes Grafton, Tyler Diamond scrambling down inside the 30 yard line. Mac, by the way, first time he had a long sleeve shirt on all year, the Grafton coach. Finally put on a long sleeve shirt. It was cold out there. Diamond hitting Nolan Warner. Look at Warner bounce off some tackles and ramble for the touchdown. That made it 14 to seven. Fourth quarter, the Warriors, Ryan Sears behind a great block from his guard and Sears running hard. Then he gets a block from his receiver. He's fired up, watch his eyes here. Yeah, all right, here we go. Then it's Liam Gore, power run of the day. Low Gore lowering the boom, getting the shoulder pads down. And here they go inside the 10, it's Gore plowing in for a touchdown, made it 21 to seven. The Warriors going into the playoffs with a win, 21-7 over Brown. All right, big one in both the Colonial League and Division 7. Valley Tech traveling to Assabet Valley. That's Hawk Gannon right there doing the game. Wearing the white hat. Has First be quarter. BVT driving off the play action. It is Jake Taylor with a great interception for Assabet. And a nifty return by Taylor as well. Good defense from the Aztecs. Later in the first, Aztecs getting on the board. Cole Nelson right up the middle. Great blocking up front. Big hole. Nelson's into the land of six. Assabet's up 6 nothing. BVT answering, J.D. Antaya, kicking it to the outside. Great block by John Furno, and Antaya's gone. He outraces the defense, takes it in for the score. We're tied up at six apiece. He knew it, late in the half. BVT striking again, Josh Mateo scrambles, keeping the play alive. Mateo, great ball on the run, grabbed by Jared Loisel. 25 yards on the touchdown strike, BVT up 12-6 at the half. The Beavers get the win 32-26 in overtime. Northbridge and Auburn, big one in D5, a must win for Auburn to try to get into the playoffs. Second quarter, six nothing Northbridge, the Rams D bowing up. Jacob Malkasian leading the way on a tackle for a loss, but the Rockets were driving. And Griffin Hanfield, this is the fourth down play. Screens it back to Brian Dillon in the sophomore. Dives for six. The Irish Express was in the crowd. He was all fired up about that touchdown. That made He's it six the best, to six. He? he knows who Fitzy. he is. Auburn D, here's Fitzy, the young Fitzy, making some plays. The senior linebacker with a big tackle all over the ball here. Late second quarter, Northbridge moving it through the air. Ryan Boyce to Aiden Fair, and Fair could be gone. Oh, oh, he just gets tripped up. That's okay, Fair would have some scores later in the game. He's a player. Boyce hitting Rocco McNeil for big yardage. First in goal, Rams now under 20 seconds, under 10, under 16 seconds to play. It's the keeper for Boyce. He goes in for six, made it 12 to six, Northridge. The Rams would go on to the playoffs with a win. There's Fair's two point conversion, 21-6 over Auburn. All right, we got Lester finally on the frenzy. Tim Griffiths <laughs> loving it. Lester in Oxford. First quarter, Lester's Dan Merrow handing off to Steven Olson. Olson breaking a tackle, powering up the middle of the 17-yard line. Then it's Merrow handing off to Olson again. Olson this time finds Pater, and it's seven nothing Wolverines. Oxford's Devin Audette to Sam Wing. Wing taking off, great speed from Wing, and he's brought down at the 32-yard line. And then it's Wing again, gets some good blocking, Wing gets north-south quickly, foot race to the end zone, he wins it. He's in for the touchdown, it's seven to six, Lester in front of Oxford by one. Second quarter now, Lester's Bryce Gosselin on the move. Gosselin, coming right into your living room, taken down by Darius Richardson just inside the 30. Merrow, rolling, connecting with Jack O'Neill who high points the football. Later in the drive, Merrow, quarterback sneak. In for the touchdown, 14-6, Lester, the Wolverines win it 28 to six is your final. So Lester still undefeated and they go into the playoffs with a lot of momentum and a home game as well. Yeah, you mean future Hall of Famer Tim Griffiths. Oh yes. In Lester. Second, the ballot. Second most favored son in football behind Tom Lauder still. All right, plenty more to come on the Frenzy. Stay with us everyone.
Our founders would have never seen this coming. Spygate? No. Deflategate? No. What then? Benji! Benji knocks down any obstacle that he can get his paws on and tackles every high interest rate that gets in between us and our customers, which is why he made the Bay State Savings Bank team. You're right. They would have never seen Benji coming, but I'm sure they're glad he came. Bay State Savings Bank. We take banking personally. I'm District Attorney Joe Early, Jr., and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. <laughs> Step for you guys to start taking circumferences. See where it's marked on beats one and three in that measure? Okay, go. Let's go one more time from the beginning. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Hi, I'm Rich Salmon, GM of Britera Nissan. Come join us for our 2019 clearance event. This is the all-new 2019 redesigned Nissan Altima, now available in all-wheel drive. Here we have the 2019 Nissan Kicks. Sporty, stylish, and incredibly fun to drive. If you work for UMass, Fallon, St. Cobain's, Wyman Gordon, or any of Worcester's largest employers, we'll take care of you with an additional discount up to $500. Britera Nissan, Route 20, Auburn, Massachusetts. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is brought to you by Bertera Nissan of Auburn, the Bancroft School in Worcester, Milford Federal, Holy Cross Athletics, the Sullivan Group, Poochie's Fine Jewelry, Nichols College, Scott Lauder, and the Worcester Office of Raymond James Investment, and the Central Mass Safety Council. All right, plenty more games with playoff implications. We are going to start with uh, Algonquin and Lemonster, and both of these teams looking to put it together. They've both had some big wins during this season. This is a good, good matchup in D3. Lemonster cheerleaders ready to go. Lemonster with the ball, start the second half, and it's Caden Constance to Javi Rodriguez. Outstanding grab. The Blue Devils. Defensive line as we switch sides now and look at their defense, giving up no space up front. Kyle Philbin stuffing the run for no gain. And Algonquin's Mike McAvoy with a tremendous effort to get off the block, swarm the runner for a loss. That's textbook, kids. Bad camera angle now from one of our own. Riley Greenwald for Algonquin throws it up, and Colin Wing makes a great grab for the first down. Algonquin moving the ball. Greenwald. Rolling out, finds Derek Blanchard for another first down in Lemonster territory. Algonquin deep in Lemonster territory, but the Blue Devils defense coming up big. Lemonster stripping the football. Blue Devils' R. Lee Gillock comes up with a recovery. Huge play for Lemonster. They go on to win 14 to 10, your final. Fitchburg and Westboro, the Red Raiders taking the field. Taking on the Rangers, Westboro handing it to Kevin McCarthy and he's making moves. McCarthy keeping the Westboro drive moving and if it's not broke, don't fix it. Here comes McCarthy entering the land of six and giving Westboro the early lead, seven to nothing. Rangers, their defense stifling and stuffing the run early. Keep Jonasson filling the hole quick. Fitchburg's D then making some plays. Jesus Padilla. Tracking down the quarterback for a sack. And now, a little deja vu, because here comes Padilla again. Chasing down and coming up with another sack. Sets up a third along deep in Westboro territory and really stuffing a drive there. Fourth and in inches midfield. Fitchburg goes for the Westboro defensive line, gets oh, lower, makes the play. Turnover on downs there, but Fitchburg comes back to win this game. 29-27, the final. We got Groton Dunstable and Hudson Groton Dunstable, the host team tonight. We got as the yeah. Crusaders tune up for the D4 playoffs. Groton Dunstable's defense strong early on. Giancarlo Orlandi rolling out. Ryan Demaruma and Colin Tedites track him down for the sack. 
Now it's Groton Dunstable driving. Bradley T. Dites connecting with Jack Barry on the slant, and it's a big first down for the Crusaders. Then it's T. Dites going up top. And a great job by Barry. Looked like he was going to be picked. Barry takes it away from the defender into the end zone. 7 0 Crusaders. Hawks defense strong. T. Dites back to pass. Quinn Brunel drills him for the sack. Second quarter, Groton Dunstable striking on offense. It is T. Dites looking for his favorite receiver, Barry. Airing it out. Hits him in stride. 54 yards on the touchdown pass. Groton Dunstable up 14 0. Crusaders going to win this one. 38 0. Your final. On to the 495 belt, upset alert here. Maynard visiting Littleton, and they're at the half. The Tigers of Maynard up 12 to seven. Third quarter, Maynard expanding the lead. Peter Jordan on the sweep, gets outside, and he is gonna go in the Maynard camo. 19 to seven, Tigers. Littleton looking to answer, great and win. To Timmy Kelleher with the catch and a big first down for Littleton. Fourth down now for Littleton, deep in Maynard territory. The Maynard defense, led by big Aiden Hobbs, stuffs the drive. Maynard wins 26 to seven. We got Justin Orell leading the way for Bay Path as Bay Path taking on Worcester Tech. Opening kickoff, they did not call for the onside kick, but it works. Paris Belnavis recovers for Worcester Tech. Tech coach Derek Robbins looks like former Falcons coach Jerry Glanville, dressed in all black. <laughs> I heard that he left tickets for Elvis at the Foley Stadium will call. Oh, no. Tech brought their hitting hats. Alagi Trawali with the big stick. Fourth and goal now for Bay Path. Minutemen throw into the end zone. Trawali, who had a great game today, breaks it up in the end zone, and Worcester Tech takes over Bay Path with a big stick as well. Great tackle, that is old number 52, Arell. Second quarter, we're still scoreless. Bay Path throwing. Oh, Reyes Rodriguez picks it off. Rodriguez with a great move. It's a pick six. Six nothing, Eagles in front. And they're going for two after the celebration. Andrew Enlow gets great blocking. Gets in for the two point conversion, makes it eight nothing Tech. Crowley had two rushing touchdowns, also had a defensive touchdown. Worcester Tech wins 34 to six. You didn't, you didn't get downfield for that conversion. I was speaking to someone. Ball Road, oh, that's a surprise. <laughs> Marlboro North Middlesex, here we go. Game tied at seven at the half. Early third, North Middlesex driving Marlboro. We were forces inverted. The fumble, <laughs> Patriots territory. Good stop by the Marlboro D. Patriots defense would answer two. As they get the sack, Jack Reedy there for the big sack for the Patriots. Patriots on offense now. They need a play, and they get it from Josh LeBlanc. A big time run from LeBlanc. And he's finally gonna be tracked down at the Marlboro two yard line. LeBlanc would cap the drive with a QB sneak from a yard out. North Middlesex up 14-7. They win the game 20 to 14 in overtime. Quaybog and Shepherd Hill as we look at the moon. Beautiful South night. Southbridge. Southbridge, not Shepherd Hill, thank you. First quarter, fourth and four for Southbridge. John Cortez, the moon threw me there. Yeah. Rolls left it and happens. keeps it. That's a first down. Mercury plays in later. Grade, I'm told. Cortez looking for the end oh. zone. And it's Thomas Dupuis with the catch. Yes, it's a touchdown for the Pioneers. Pioneers going for two. Cortez looking for a man. Finding Marcos Rosado. They could use a little more light from the moon. It's 8-0 Southbridge. Quaybog looking to respond. The Pioneer defense has other ideas. Jetzel Diaz throwing down the QB for a big loss. Second Jetzel. quarter now. Southbridge driving. Alex Torres on the carrot looking for room. Hurdles a defender and gets the first down. Pioneers looking deep now and airing it out. Alex Worthington, great coverage, and he picks it off. High pointing the football for Quaybog. Less than two minutes to go in the half. Here comes the Quaybog offense. Derek Shepard, the bomb. Caught by Worthington for the touchdown. Shepard had 118 yards. Matt Griffin had 10 tackles. Quaybog with a big come from behind win. 14 to eight, your final. Good to be back under the lights down at McMahon Field though. Clinton and Lunenberg, the band on the field for senior night late in the second quarter. It's Lunenberg's Philip Arpano to Cameron McKenzie for a touchdown. The Blue Knights lead 14 to 13. Clinton trying to answer before the half. 
The pass, though, was intercepted by Anders Sar Sarenpa. And Clinton's defense, a couple of sacks in the half, so the score remains 14-13. Third quarter, it's Arpano's pass, picked off by Clinton's Lincoln Ashline. Ensuing drive, it's Gent going deep downfield to Rich Corelli. Corelli's going to ramble, 69 yards for the score, but Lunenburg wins the game, 34 to 26. All right, friends, we got Abby Kelly and Monty Tech. Late second quarter, Monty Tech up 16, nothing, looking to build on their lead. TJ Farr hooking up with Lencier or Sensier Mills. He comes up with a huge catch. Mateo Serrano. Serrano's got the disc, and Serrano's got a touchdown. Monty Tech up 24, nothing. Monty Tech, it is far rolling, but it's picked off by Brendan Mathot. Good defense. First play after the interception, Jamie Brown getting through the offensive line. Bad news, Brown's going to get himself a sack. <laughs> we continue Good after news, another big news. loss on second down. Third down, it's the same story. Jamie Brown, bad news, Brown, a monster on the D-line. Monty Tech gets a big win tonight. 40-6 to six is your final. All right, I look at the Quaybog game. That's a great win for Quaybog, coming from behind to beat a very tough and a very sound Selfridge team. No question about it. And Fitchburg's the number one seed in their division. They get a big come from behind win today. Just that turnaround in one year yeah. for the Red Raiders. All right, plenty more to come on the Frenzy. Sullivan Group is an insurance and risk management services firm based in Worcester for over 60 years. Our company values, our family values. Committed to our clients and finding them the best solutions. Committed to being independent. Committed to our community. We live here, we work here, we volunteer here. The Sullivan Insurance Group. Committed to excellence. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Providing our customers with the highest level of quality, service, and value. Poochie's Fine Jewelry, 205 West Boylston Street in West Boylston. Bison Pride is the feeling that you get when you're with all of your Nichols friends and you're rooting for your team and your school and your community. Yes, even though we are a smaller school, you feel the big school vibe here. Milford Federal Bank has been part of our community's history, honoring local traditions, supporting local causes, and caring about local issues since 1887. While many community banks have come and gone through the years, we're still here committed to our loyal customers and the communities we serve. We're Milford Federal Bank, your community, your bank, your choice. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Carriglia and Bay State Savings Bank. All right, plenty more highlights to get to. We're going to begin with Tingsboro and Oakmont. This is a big game, big game for Oakmont. Tingsboro, of course, having a great season, but so is Oakmont, and Oakmont always tough on their home turf. Colton Beausoleil, you know him by now. He's a star every Friday on the Frenzy. And he's got the keeper, breaks the tackle, gets down to the four-yard line. A few plays later. It is Beausoleil on the QB sneak into the land of six. Oakmont's up seven to nothing. Second quarter now. Oakmont near midfield. It is Beausoleil with the keeper. And he's off to the races. Breaking tackles and then breaking away. 
Beausoleil in for the touchdown. The sideline's loving it. Oakmont sideline, very energetic tonight. <laughs> they know where the camera is. Later in the quarter, it is Tingsboro driving. They go up top, but it's Beausoleil playing a great two-way game, making all the big plays. He comes up with the interception. Oakmont comes out on top tonight, 24-21. This is senior night at St. Bernard's. Bernardians getting a nice pick there, and they're taking on Sutton Douglas. And first quarter, it's Nico Mancini from 31 yards out for a touchdown. 7-0 St. B's, Sutton's first drive. Casey Holland taking it outside. Nice little run, but the drive would stall. St. B's with the ball again. It's Dominic, Qu Dominic Cuevas keeping it and running it. I like this little spaghetti western music we got in the background. Yeah, you hear that? sure, I hear you. It's like I the old you. Clint Eastwood movies. Here we go, it's Mancini. Ride high in the saddle, man. Comes right into your living room for his second touchdown, 14 to nothing. Bernardians. Doo -doo -doo. Yep. Sutton driving again. The pass picked off though by Antonio Mancini. I'll be your Huckleberry. And look at him go, Mancini wearing number one, takes it all the way back down to the one. Antonio would have a touchdown after that. St. Bernard's wins it 42 to eight. Worcester State taking on Fitchburg State tonight. Big college matchup. First quarter scoreless game. Fitchburg State's Connor Fitzsimmons hooking up with Joshua Nelson down to the 22 yard line. Then it's Fitzsimmons swinging it out to Stephen Lawton. Lawton played for Air Shirley and he's got a big first down. Then it's Lawton again, pounding it into the end zone. 7-0 Fitchburg State. Second quarter, Worcester State's Aaron Moses Williams firing a dart to Kyler Brown. There's a dart, man. Brown knocked out at the one yard line. Next play, Amir Mels. In for the touchdown, the PAT no good, so it's a one point game, 7-6. But Fitchburg getting the win tonight, 28-6 is your final. We've got Uxbridge and Millbury live tomorrow. High school football, our coverage begins Saturday beginning at 2 p.m. Both those Oak teams going to the playoffs. And Oakmont looking good too, beating Kingsboro tonight at home. A very good Kingsboro team. Oakmont, a lot of momentum going into the postseason. Plenty more from us, man of the match as well, when we return. I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr. And I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. It's easy to bully, but the really strong help others. Just say no to bullying. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our founders would have never seen this coming. Spygate? No. Deflategate? No. What then? Benji! Benji knocks down any obstacle that he can get his paws on and tackles every high interest rate that gets in between us and our customers, which is why he made the Bay State Savings Bank team. You're right, they would have never seen Benji coming, but I'm sure they're glad he came. Bay State Savings Bank, we take banking personally. Man of the Match is presented by Scott Louder and the Worcester Office of Raymond James Investment. All right, man of the match time. My man of the match goes to Quaybog's Matt Griffin. The defense rests for the Cougars tonight. Griffin had 10 tackles. He was going sideline to sideline, a disruptive force on the field. Quaybog with a big, big win over Southbridge tonight. Matt Griffin and his 10 tackles, my man of the match. Tough to choose for me, so I'm going with two from Shepherd Hill. Gabe Dos Santos, Nathaniel Cooper combining for seven touchdowns tonight and a big come from behind win for Shepherd Hill over Doherty. They are my men of the match for the Rams. All right, so uh, next week we got the playoffs. We got BVT taking on West Boylston. That's going to be wow. absolutely huge. Assabet and Lester, those are two really, really good games and four teams that are very well coached. Yeah, and Division Three looks great. Wachusett, Doherty. And St. John, look like Doherty St. John's and yep. Wachusett and Shepherd Hill. Could be a lot of fun. I want to say this. Shout out to Tony Pena from Blackstone Valley Tech. His guys are thinking about him tonight. We are too. Much love and support to you, Tony, as you go through a little bit of battle. We're thinking of you. Yeah, tough time. And anyone, anyway, certainly all of us here on the Frenzy, but everyone in the Central Mass football community with Tony Pena and Blackstone Valley Tech tonight.